Welcome back to another video of IV Fluid Master IV Fluid course and today we're going to discuss fluid resuscitation in septic shock. So so far we agreed upon that volume resuscitation or fluid resuscitation we use an isotonic solution LR or normal saline. Right? Also you could argue can I create my own um solution uh, isotonic solution by mixing different e milli equivalents of different electrolytes of course that's possible but you will make your pharmacist angry and also these are the crystalloid solution that they were studied in the septic shock protocols anyway in septic shock once you have this immediately infuse 30 ml per kg as fluid boluses should be in the first three hours along with antibiotic after obtaining cultures and you pick either normal saline or LR and as we mentioned if you worried about acidosis hyperchloremia and uh, then you pick lactated drinker there is no difference between two and the there is no difference between these and colloids so there is no point giving colloids which are way more expensive compared to this solution now once you give this you assess the patient is the patient still hypotensive if still hypotensive and signs of hypoperfusion you start vasopressors right because the definition of septic shock is persistent hypotension despite adequate fluid resuscitation and fluid resuscitation i mean this remember vasopressors when we talked about vasopressors we said in septic shock your first choice is nor epi then second is vasopressin just to refresh my third epinephrine of course, you assess a few things here. You look at the skin tergor, urine output, vital signs, lactic acid, right? Just to give an idea, is the patient still needing more volume or not? Responding to the volume or not? So here's the debate. Some say no more fluids after the 30 ml per kg because extra amount of fluid associated with increased mortality and that's a debatable thing to be honest with you my point if you give this and the patient showing improvement say the blood pressure improve heart rate improve lactic acid coming down but still you know still hypotensive despite the improvement things is still showing that there's still some hyperperfusion nobody will blame you to give another an extra liter for example right or two so if there is signs of response if let's say you gave this and you were not sure you decided to give another liter still no signs of response there is no point continuing IV fluid okay the next questions people may ask how about continuing IV fluid resuscitation at a slower rate let's say continuing LR at 125 ml per hour and again there is a debate about that because they're saying if the patient did not respond to initial fluid resuscitation unlikely to respond after that some argue that we don't need we need IV fluid for maintenance purposes the patient is not going to be eating drinking etc and again there is no clear cut there's no consensus on that but if you worried about maintenance and physiologic losses you can use that remember if in the first 24 hours maximum 48 hours um, you should start some kind of nutrition and stop all IV fluid because most of these patients will require to be diuresed eventually believe it or not let me conclude wrap up now you have a patient in septic shock in the emergency room or severe sepsis even if you don't have to calculate the ER most of the ER now have their own protocol but 30 cc per kg as soon as possible or at least two to three liters 
most of the most of patients will fall into that range of LR or NS given as boluses okay the boluses could be as a 500 cc or a liter every time every with every bolus you assess these signs of response based on vital signs urine output lactic acids um, and also assess for pulmonary edema the only limiting factor to keep resuscitating to give this resuscitations is a convincing evidence of pulmonary edema the patient is getting more short of breath getting more hypoxic crackles and chest x-ray support that that's the only time you stop this IV fluid so you give these as fluid boluses a 500 cc or a liter you assess for these things if you finish these fluid boluses the patient is still hypotensive you start with the process now practically sometimes the patient is so profoundly hypotensive you start fluid resuscitation and you start vasopressors at the same time that's also can happen two to three liters or 30 cc per kg after that use your clinical judgment if the patient needs another liter or two but no more than that the studies showed we used to give four or five liters of the pad but the studies showed there is no difference in mortality or outcome if you give 30 ml per kg compared to the larger amount we used to do i'll see you next video Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell so you get to see the videos as soon as they are released. Glad to have you on board.